All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dead Old Bastards World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series. Live here on Ultimate Dirt TV, a big crowd in the house tonight as we get set for qualifying right now. Running on times to come through, we are live from Belusha Speedway Park here in Barberville, Florida. We're looking at times coming through right now. Joel Berkeley, quick time with a 13.974. Craig Dunn, second quick with a 14.073. Landis with a 14.077 as Berkeley he goes quicker with a 13.779. And Stephen Hill, position number four. So as I said, a big crowd. I think we've almost got 30 cars. We're definitely in the late 20s. That's for sure. So it's going to be a great night of racing here to come. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. And you can hear myself talk here for a second. There we go. We are done. So once again, we want to welcome you all to Ultimate Dirt TV. For round number nine of the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards. Next couple of cars on the racetrack. Right now in the triple two in the Deadhead Worm Paints. The triple two of Weston Newell. In the UW Motorsports Ultimate Dirt TV Slade Colby Side Paints number 84. It is Chris Brenner. In the Colby Side Paints. Number 22, it is Jason Nygaard. And in the Dirt Co Media, 006, it is Cody Olsen. Chris Brenner, second quick with a 13.990. Weston Newell with a 14.064. Nygaard with a 14.202. Brenner, quick time with a 13.733. Nygaard, third quick with a 13.844. Weston Newell with a 14.055. And Cody Olsen with a 14.168. So at the moment, Chris Brenner sits position number one. Edging out Joel Berkeley by 0 0.046 of a second. Rolling out onto the racetrack in car number 11. It is Zach McLaughlin. Zach McLaughlin in car number 11. Behind him in car number five. In the tech three, Team VLR.com number five. It's all the Hylomaniacs for David Harleman. And on these other cars, we'll have a look here. In the UW Motorsports, Lapresto Racing 257. It's Anthony Lapresto. McLaughlin, first time, a 14.232. David Heilman with a 14.666. Anthony Lapresto with a 14.056. We'll see if these three drivers can improve. McLaughlin with a 14.042. Jumps to position four. David Heilman, he cannot. He gets the wall on lap number two. And Lapresto slower on his second lap. So a 14.056 is good enough for six quick at the moment. As we wait for another group of cars to come out here and tackle the Volusia Speedway Park. In a car number 47. In the Polaris entry in the Octane Inc. It is Garrett Pepiat. Nice to have this guy back. Missed the 360 race on Tuesday, but back for the 410. Sprint cars in car number 21. It's Tyler Henselman. In the Marveline Express Care. Black Diamond Motorsports, Ultimate Dirt TV, number 35, it is John Batista. And in the SETI Group, dot com, number 97, Matthew Henninger. Matthew Henninger in car number 97. Time's coming through, Pepe up with a 14.189. Henselman with a 14.305. Batista with a 14.042, jumps to position 5. Henningo with a 14.493. Pepe out. He doesn't improve. Neither does the Senselman. Weston, uh, sorry, John Batista will improve to position 4 with a 13.860. And Matthew Henninger with a 14.467. It's position number 14. And we must let all you people know. For first time viewers, if you're watching here, 
We take the top 20 to the main event. 24, if there's 24, if, sorry, if there's 25 or more cars, we take the top 20 to the main event. If there's 24 cars or less. All the drivers will be in the main event. We take 24 cars for our 35 lap feature event. In the Scott Digital Racing, Colby Zypaint, oh, Ultimate Dirt TV, number 37, Zane Scott on the racetrack. And the Dirt Track and Bastard, Blue Sphere, Ultimate Dirt TV, number 93, Chris Roberts. Behind him, his teammate in car number 73, Alan Samoa. And in the Midwest Transportation, Kistler Engines, number 92, it is Mike Keegan. Mike Keegan in car number 30, oh, not number 92, in fact. Scott, your first time will be a 14.405. Roberts with a 14.454. Samoa with a 14.354. And Keegan with a 14.435. Scott looking to improve. Jumps to position 12 with a 14.173. Roberts slower. Samoa with a 14.275. Position 14. And Mike Keegan on screen with a 14.348. Position at number 16. So I'll go back to what I was saying just before. Seeing as though we've got 25 or more cars, we run a B main. The B main will consist of eight laps. No yellows in the B main, so it's just run straight up. And you need to be in the top four to transfer. And there's Emax 911. It's going to be Steve Castle. In the double zero in the Air Force. Entry, it's going to be Nathan McClellan. And in the Mobile One, Blue Sphere, Dayton Freight, or Dayton Freight, Aaron Schaefer. In car number 39, it's Jimmy Prakash. We'll have a look at Steve Castle. So 20 drivers, in fact 19 drivers, have taken the time at the moment. Now Steve Castle with a 14386. McClellan with a 14.745. Schaefer with a 14.625. It's 20th quick. He's on the bubble. And Jimmy Prakash with a 14.731. Castle slower on lap two. Schaefer with a 14.552. Improves on time but not position. Prakash with a 14.731. And McClellan with a 14.745. So we're just separated by roughly... A little bit over a second right now from first all the way through to 23rd we have our next group of cars to come out it should be eight cars hopefully here we go in the pens on number 45 it is Robert Scott Robert Scott in car number 45 in the Bad Boy Buggies. Off-road Chevrolet, Tony Stewart, paint scheme, number 123, David Mosier. And in the FVP, Casey's General Store, number 360, it's Jamie Wallace. Scott, 21st quick with a 14.658. Mosier, 21st quick now with a 14.617. Wallace with a 14.685. Scott looking to improve. He does with a 14.353. Jumps to position 17. Mosier slow on that lap. And we look at Jamie Wallace with a 14.657. 23rd quick. So a B main for Jamie Wallace. And boys, it's not so much cracking up a Colby. But it's time for a drink. Oh, he's put the wings on this race car. And he's made the way to the Lucia Speedway Park in the Black Diamonds Motorsports. 090 entry. It's going to be Trevor Royer. Trevor Royer just picked up a win in a weakness race. Literally just half hour ago. You can check it out on Ultimate Dirt TV. And in the Midwest, number 53, it's Tom Prakash. Green flag. On what could potentially be the second last group. Might even be the second or the last group of qualifying. 
As we look, Prakash with a 14.763. Royer jumps to position 16 with a 14.316. Prakash on screen, looking to improve on his time. He does not, so 14.763. Royer will jump to position number 9 with a 14.075. And that leaves three cars to qualify. We got Parker Davis, Blake Durflinger, and Alex Orions left to tackle the Volusia Speedway Park. It should have one lap. In fact, it's just going to be Parker Davis. So Davis should get one lap in here. So the 94. Well, Parker Davis getting his qualifying in at the moment. We look at the time, it's going to be a 14.793, 29th quick, so officially 29 cars took a lap around the Volusia Speedway Park as we get set for race number one of the ninth round of the series. And that will conclude qualifying here as we get set to run a B main, boys. A B main up next on the program. Position 21 on back. So our top 20 made it. And let me tell you, 20 and 21st was separated by 0 0.013 of a second. So 1300th of a second we had. And Chris Roberts was that 20th car that made the feature event the first car that did not but he's a sponsor here on ultimate dirt tv in the city group holdings city group number 97 matthew henninger We'll have a look at our points. Well, I will. You won't. But I will be able to give you... Uh, uh, let you know who's where. So we can tell you... I'm just trying to get the correct points up. So, so far, eight weeks have been completed. Two races per round, per week, I should say. We'll go with per night. So, out of the 16 races, Anthony Lopresto has picked up nine feature wins. Chris Brenner has picked up one. Zach McLaughlin has picked up one. Drew Neal has picked up two. Jason Brown, Tyson Landis, and Ryan Pace have also picked up feature wins as well. So it's uh, just trying to get the points overall. So tonight we visit the Volusia Speedway Park. Next week we go to Lanier. We then fire off to USA and we finish at the dirt track at Charlotte for the World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series. I believe that will be called the World Finals Night. So the last time these drivers were at Volusia, Drew Neal picked up a win in race one, and it was Anthony Lopresto who got the win in race number two. We get set for the B main here this evening. It'll be eight laps in distance. And we'll go through... Now, City Group Holdings starting grid as Blake Durflinger finally joins the party in that number 19 machine. So in the City Group, number 97 starting on pole position is going to be Matthew Henninger. To his outside of the 77, it's Aaron Schaefer. At a position number 3 in the 123, it's going to be David Mosier. At a position number 4, it's the 360 of Jamie Wallace. At a position number 5... 
It's going to be David Heilman to his outside in the 39. Jimmy Prakash out of position six. Out of position seven, Nathan McClellan. And out of position at number eight, the 53 of Tom Prakash. Parker Davis will start out of position number nine in the J-Skins. Number six, starting out of position tennis, Alex Arrines. And riding shotgun at the back needs to be careful. Coming through this field, but he's only got eight laps to do it. It's Blake Derflinger. We get set to go green here at Volusia Speedway Park. And the green flag is out. Eight laps on the board. Matthew Henninger wasting no time to try and get to the front. And look at the five already on the inside. Start of position five. He's up to position three. Now the top four. Remember, they will advance to the main event after this B main. Lap one in the books. And that belongs to Matthew Henninger. Schaefer now battling side by side with Harleman as they come out at turn number two. Harleman on the low side. Trying to catfish it around the bottom side. Schaefer working on the top side of the racetrack. Henninger. Oh, did he get a little bit out of shape there with Schaefer? Harleman, he's just a little bit closer right now. He now moves to the inside. Diamonds it down the corner. Tries to cut. Down to the low side, he picks up second. Now challenging for the race lead is the number five of David Harleman. But the city group number 97 of Matthew Henninger continuing to lead this one. Halfway home as they complete four down, four to run. Race control just confirming that one right now. The battle is on for your top three. Meanwhile, look at Blake Derflinger from the back of the bus up to position number four. He is on a charge right now. He's got the 360 of Jamie Wallace looking to the inside, but he can't make it happen. New, meanwhile, new race leader, race leader David Heileman. Henninger in second, Schaefer, and then he got Derflinger. Two to run. Yes, they're talking about ultimate third to me. Here comes Derfling with a double slide jump. Three wide out of turn number two. Oh, no, Henninger. Can he keep it going? Yes, he can. The white flag is out. One to run. We'll keep an eye on that fourth and final transfer spot. It belongs to the 97 Henninger. Meanwhile, Wallace in the 360 moves to the inside. Harleman's got this one wrapped up in the books. They come through turns three and four. It will be Harleman, Derflinger, Schaefer, and the 97 of Matthew Henninger just making it into the show. And what a drive. From your top four, action are plenty, but the five, well, after a qualifying, disappointing qualifying effort, the five will find victory lane here in the B main tonight. His teammate Blake Durflinger will come home in second. We'll go back to the 77 of Aaron Schaefer and the 97, the City Group. Matthew Henninger will finish in four, so that will conclude... The B main. We're going to take a quick break, and once again, we want to thank Blue Sphere Corporation for coming on board this season. They have the name, the name naming rights sponsor of the 360 and 410 winged sprint car series. Big thanks to Dirty Old Bastards for allowing Ultimate Dirt TV to cover the action all season long, and in fact, all last season as well. It's been a great partnership, and I thoroughly enjoyed the. 24 weeks we would have had this is probably week 21 ultimate dirt tv well they've got a couple of sponsors of our own obviously we want to thank uh city group holdings for coming on board as the name we write sponsor for the starting grid and also finishing results for the remainder of this season and also uh, for the entire season of next season as well so we thank the guys that uh, made all that possible and we want to thank Colby's Eye Paints as well for coming on board as the name right sponsor for the instant replays so any replays tonight are brought to you by Colby's Eye Paints you can check them out at colbyseyepaints.com and you can also check out a city group on the internet as well www.cedi that's c-e-d-i dot com you can check those guys out as well so Massive thank you to those guys for coming on board. We do have uh, some sponsorship opportunities available as well. If you want to get your logo and your name out there, please message the Ultimate Dirt TV Facebook page and uh, the guys 
on the back end of that one can sort that one out. With that being said, we start race number one of round number nine of the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards World of Outlaws 410 Sprint Car Series from Volusia. We take a look at our City Group Holdings starting grid. Sorry, it's coming to me quite the week. Starting on the pole in category 84, it is Chris Brenner. To his outside the night of Joel Berkeley, what a front row that he's going to be. What a race that will be. Starting out of position number three, the 22 of Jason Nygaard lines up alongside the 35 of John Batista. At the position five, the 11 of Zach McLaughlin. On his outside in the triple two, it is Weston Newell out of position number six. Out of position seven, the 257 of Anthony Lopresto to his outside of row number four. In the 057, it's Craig Dunn. Out of position number nine in the 090, Trevor Royer. He will line up alongside a feature winner earlier on this season in car number 31, Tyson Landis. In the 127, Stephen Hill lines up out of position number 11. On the outside of the 6th row, out of position 12 is the 006 of Cody Olsen. Of course, that would happen. One moment, folks. When you're trying to do about 18 different things at once, we go to our seventh row in car number 37. It is Zane Scott out of position 13. The 47 of Garrett Pepe will start out of position 14. Out of position 15, Alan Samel lines up alongside his teammate Tyler Henselman. Out of position 17 of Mike Keegan, he lines up alongside Robert Scott. Steve Castle and Chris Roberts will be your 10th row. Our 11th row will consist of David Harleman on the inside to his outside teammate in car number 19. It is Blake Derflinger. At a position 23 will be the 77 of Aaron Schaefer. And starting position number 24 in car number 97, it's going to be Matthew Henninger. Thirty-five laps on the board. We are set for an absolute doozy of a race. It should be one of the best you'll see here on Ultimate Dirt TV. The cars two in rows of two by two by two, twelve rows deep, twenty-four starters. Here in the Blue Sphere Corporation, Dirty Old Bastards, World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series, we get set round number nine. Race one about to launch and Chris Brenner gets on the ass early. And that leaves Berkeley Nygaard through the middle, slides up in front of Batista. They are three wide in the mid pack of this one. We look at the battle on screen right now. Yellow flag is out, flag is out on the racetrack. And we have the 911 of Steve Castle. So an early caution here as we take a look at our Colby's Eye Paints instant replay. Just gonna move these down a bit because that's quite that's annoying me quite a bit. Let's take a look at our Colby's eye paints instant replay and see what happened to the 911. He just come up in front of Tyler Henselman. Henselman got hit from behind by I believe the 45 it was of Robert Scott. You see that the right of your screen castle just got a little bit loose in front of Henselman, but Henselman, well he's still able to circulate around the racetrack at the moment. But Brenner led the opening lap and well, all restarts are single file now. So we'll get back to the action in just a moment. We're under two to green and the white flag will be at lap number 38.
Getting set to go back to green flag action. Chris Brenner. About to roll off here. Yeah, he chooses to wait just a little bit longer there. And, well, he will get on the gas. So expect this track to really start to slicken off. McLaughlin, Newell, and Nigo were on screen just there. They're almost three wide as they came out of turn number two. Meanwhile, Batista all over the back of Berkeley through turns three and four. Through turns one and two. He's, he's all over the back of him again. They battle on for second and third right now for Batista. Now going to look to the low side in turns three and four. Berkeley up top. They're side by side. They come in at turn four. Give it to Berkeley. Barely hanging on right now as he works the cushion through turns one and two. Meanwhile, here comes Nygaard. Trying to run down the 35 of John Batista. Western Newell going to the low side in three and four, as does Zach McLaughlin. But they go to the top. In fact, it's Trevor Royer. Yellow flag is out, and that looks to be the 21 of Tyler Henselman and Alan Samoan. Let's take a look at a Colby's eye paint. Instant replay, see what happened. So two separate accidents here. So you see Durfling are getting a run on Samoan. Rides the cushion, he hit the wall, and there was just a bit of contact there between Samoan and Durflinger. And then we have a look at what happened to Henselman. As he went to come down to the low side, he got, uh, well, he got into the left side there of Mike Keegan in front of him. All this action happened in front, and Scott uh, came through and got the 21, the 21 upside down. And, well, we're going to blame Chris Roberts on that one. Not for an on-track incident, but just because Henselman uh, didn't finish. But Chris Brenner, back to the front of this field we go. And we'll listen in to race control here in just a moment, so... One to green guys, tighten up, single foul, white flag, lap 41. We then may fire any time after the chuck pulls off, then they pass the end of the guardrail outside of turn four. Brenner about to send us back to green flag racing conditions. He jumps back on the gas and well, Batista was caught pretty much sleeping on that restart. There might be something wrong with Batista. He might have a, a meatball flag or something because that 35 is slowing in through turns of three and four. In fact, he's going back to the pits. So the 35 is done for. Look at Zane's going around the outside of Stephen Hill. What a time to, to look at that 37. Oh, no. Oh, McLaughlin into the wall. I believe that was. Stephen Hill literally had nowhere to go. To take a look. What a shot that was. We're having a look at a Colby's eye paint. Instant replay. Just got a little bit too high. Caught the wall. Then the opening came and Stephen Hill literally had nowhere to go. Take a look at the Colby's Eye Paints instant replay on board camera angle. Let's get into the marbles and the right rear that just got sucked into the wall. And you hate to see it, but the 11 of Zach McLaughlin. Well, he's going to find himself on Pit Road. A couple of these cars coming into Pit Road as well, so. Yeah, uh, slowly starting to get through this one. And I apologise about the taskbar being down the bottom. That's uh, really annoyed me.
Ja. Ja, 50 right now. Of course that would do that. Nothing's going right right now. Green's out. Green flag. Green flag. Oh, we go back to green flag racing conditions here. And Brenner is your race leader. There we go. Now that's fixed. Three wide in turns, three and four. Is that David Holman up to position four? Yes, it is. He started position 21. And he's just made his way towards the front of the field. How about Jason Nygaard in position number three at the moment? But it's Chris Brenner out in front. Trying on the bottom side through turns three and four. And he may have just found something. Because Harleman from 21st. Up to position number five. He's got Weston Newell in front of him on screen. Newell down to the bottom side of the racetrack. The cushion is there in three and four. You can really see these drivers. Oh, no. Naga to Weston Newell. The twos come together. But only one survives. And we will take a look at our Colby's Eye Paints instant replay. On screen, Naga on the outside, on the left-hand side. I'm going to have a look at that in slow motion because uh, that was just, it almost looked like a bit of a racing incident. So your first car there, Chris Brenner, Joel Berkeley, and you see the next two cars side by side. I think Weston Newell, yeah, Weston Newell just uh, came up into Nygaard. So you're watching uh, a replay again on screen, thanks to Colby's Eye Paints. So keep an eye on the two cars coming through now. You see the triple two comes up into the 22. And this should be a, a beautiful shot of Western Newell's car upside down. But getting it back on all four. So the triple two right there. What a good shot. That is. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I've been on point with the camera angles as of late. So let me go back to live action shots here I'm watching the cars roll through turns three and four there we go just perfect timing so our top three right now Chris Brenner, Joel Berkeley and David Heilerman if you're watching the field just assemble single file so have one more car coming through your screen here in just a moment So Chris Brenner, I didn't even hear what lap uh, the white flag was on, so I apologise for that one. What are we in our fourth caution? We say fourth caution, white flag should be lap 47 or lap, or we're going to go lap 50. So a good shot here as the cars restart that one, and uh-oh, uh-oh, Chris Brenner. Your race leader, he has just given this one away. Oh, let's have a look and see what happened here on this restart. Berkeley got a great jump on his inside, went to the... Brenner? It's like the car just sort of snapped right on him. Let's have a look. They call it Zarpay Instant Replay. It's like it just didn't want to turn. Maybe an issue on that race car, but... I just launched. Not sure what happened to him, so yeah, I'm not watching 
in chat, and if he is, man, let us know what happened because it looked like something may have, you know, your wheel might have broke or something like that. It was just the car just was turned to the right, and that's where it went. That's where it stayed. Off, and they reach the end of the guardrail and we're green lights, which is what happens first. Well, they didn't yeah, hear what. As soon as we made contact, something. My Octos did something weird, I don't know. Alright, so there we go, an Octopus Rift issue. Yeah, that's what I thought, Garrett. Maybe you couldn't see going into, into turn one. But Berkeley has the race lead. Yes, Harleman behind him. And Zane Scott in the 37. We go back to green flag. A racing conditions right now. Berkeley race lead to Harleman from 21st up to 2nd. Looking to be the hard charger. Oh, Berkeley jumps the cushion. Harleman gets tagged. Zane Scott. Oh. Oh, no. Zane Scott now upside down. Oh, no. Running third. This just sucks for everyone involved. You look at the contact here between Harleman and Berkeley. Berkeley just shut the cushion. Harleman had nowhere to go. And Zane Scott came through Schaefer as they were coming out of turn four. The yellow flag had sort of just come out. And the 37 ends up on his lid. Yeah, nowhere to go, unfortunately, buddy. Oh, man. That was uh, just Volusia. Well, Berkeley, he's always said he's had the Volusia curse. He broke the curse uh, about four weeks ago, I think, in, a, in an Australian league. And, uh, well, he's looking to continue to, uh, to put that curse six foot in the ground. How about Blake Durflinger from 22nd and now up to position at number three, Chris Roberts from deep in the field as well. But, Bold Jerkley, or the Perkinator, the inside joke. Joel Berkeley has the race lead. Flag lap 53, lead may fire any time after. White flag lap 53. So it's be 32 now, so we've still got 22 to run. Twenty-two remain. Uh, Berkeley wastes no time on getting back onto the gas. And now here comes Durfling on the inside. They make contact. Landis and look at Mike Keegan on the outside. He pick he goes from fifth to second. Keegan works the cushion through one and two and now through turn three and four. He will grab a second at the line. Work on the top. Durflinger now trying to get around the outside of Landis. Meanwhile, Keegan got past Roberts and an outside groove is starting to form up right now. It's definitely gonna be the fastest way around here. Durflinger. Well top to bottom all over the racetrack. This racetrack is very slick, a very tough conditions at the moment here at Volusia. Keegan, here we go in the 92. He's got a fair way to catch up to your race leader, 1.7 seconds. And look at Roberts back on the inside of Keegan, side by side for second right now. The 92 and 93 battling, battling it out. And here comes the 19 of Derflinger. Landis now in, into a top five. Roberts tries to work around the outside. What did we say white flag was that? Light 54. 17 remain as we have officially completed the halfway stage of the twin 35 lap feature. The 35 lap feature event race number one. Definitely looks to the low side. Landis working the outside in turns one and two. Yellow flag is out as we cycle through our cars on pit road and... We're not sure who that one was. We're going to have a look at the 90 of Trevor Royer. Oh, no, I believe it was. 
the yellow card at 45. And just got all out of shape. Spun himself, so the 45 of Robert Scott. That thanks to Colby's eye paints for the instant replay. 45 Robert Scott around and well, uh, a little bit over a two second lead from Berkeley. He is now gone. It will come back to this restart. So this race, we've had two leaders. We've had Brenner and Berkeley. Brenner and Berkeley talked a bit of smack to each other on who was going to win. There was slight contact on a couple of restarts ago when Brenner had the lead, but uh, it seemed an innocuous issue for Brenner. And his night was over. So now that we should be on white flag at lap 57. Yep, about 15 to go. There we go, 15 to go. As time may be running out as well. As we got 11 minutes remain in this session. Berkeley gets back on the gas early on. And that nine machine. Here comes Harleman again. He's come out of nowhere. All the Harleman next cheering on. That number five is Derflinger. Gets the cushion. And he's just trying to hang on. Meanwhile, Roberts with a slider on Keegan. He goes to the low side. He shuts the door in turns three and four. He slides up, tries to hit the cushion on exit now. Keegan and Woe, he got teammates battling out. Here comes Harleman. Oh, Keegan gets inside wall. Three wide, three wide again. Harleman and Durfling, and they went inside, outside of Keegan. And we now got about 12 to run. Harleman back up to position number three. Now looking to come after the 93 of Chris Roberts. 12 to go in the main event. Keegan battling it out with Tyson Landis side by side for fifth. 11 to go in the main event. And Harleman challenging for second. Has he got anything for Roberts in the 93? We should have 10 to run. There we go. Just on cue. 10 laps remain in the main event. So, an I racing heat race distance format. Actually, no, it's in, uh, eight laps. Nine to go for Berkeley in the nine machine. He's pulled a 3.5 second lead. In fact, it should be bigger. In fact, it does. He's just pulled a tenth and a half on that previous lap. He is turning lap times in the mid 14 second bracket. 14.5 to be exact. The rest of the drivers... Harleman of 14.8, Durfling of 14.8, Roberts 15 zeros, and man, Harleman now up to position number two, a 3.7 second gap separates Harleman in the five machine and Berkeley in the nine. I think we've got seven to go. The gap now down to 3.2 seconds. Harleman reeled in half a tenth on that last lap. What can he do through... Turns three and four. Berkeley now. Three, still 3.2. They were very similar sort of lap times between these two. Five to go. Five. Oh, Schaefer. Look out, Berkeley. Lap cars. He's going to put a slider on Schaefer. Schaefer smart enough not to race the leaders right now. Well, the leader. Oh. These drivers are fairly spread out right now as it's now a 2.8 second gap. Hill goes to the inside. I think we got three to run out of turn four. Berkeley with a 14.573. He is so close to his best lap time of the race with a 14.562. But Schaefer, then you go back to Harleman. Two laps to run. Oh, Schaefer! Got out of shape in turns three and four in front of Harleman. 
<clears throat> but Heilman able to put down his fast lap of the race with a 14.589. In turns three and four, the white flag is now out for your race leader, the number nine machine, Joel Berkeley. About to put that nine in victory lane for the first time this season. Through turns three and four, rails the cushion. Check it, flag is out. Joel Berkeley gets the job done. He will take over the checkers here at Volusia. Harleman will grab second. Third will go to Chris Roberts. We'll take a quick look at our City Group Holdings finishing result. Blake Durfling, a fourth. Tyson Landis, Mike Keegan, Aaron Schaefer, Weston Newell, Steve Castle, Alan Samel, your top ten. We go to Stephen Hill, Trevor Roya, Robert Scott, Matthew Henninger, Zane Scott, Garrett Pepiat, Chris Brenner, Nygaard, Olsen, McLaughlin, Batista, Henselman, and Craig Dunn. Our 24 starter. Lopresto. So well done to Joel Berkeley on getting the win here in that number nine machine. And we're going to have a chat with our top three. In fact, we're going to go... I'm not going to go straight to victory lane. We're going to... <laughs> going to try and get... Uh... David Heilman in here. Change a few things quickly. All right, so we're chatting with our third place finisher, Chris Roberts. Chris, congratulations on the third. You had second there for a bit, and you know you were challenging for the lead, but uh, uh, the car. Kind of just maybe just went away from me a little bit. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Uh, no, the car was good. It's just uh, there was no way my setup was not going to work on the top side through three and four. I was glued to the bottom the whole way. That was my only lane. So I think I was losing some out of out of turn four. But, uh, you know, it worked good enough around the bottom to come on with a podium after starting 20th. That's just something about... Uh... You just you need to qualify better. I mean, you know, you can always seem to to get towards the the front of the field, but um, you know, do you think you, you had a better chance at, at winning this one if you qualified a little bit better, or was it, you know, it's just the way it happened? Uh, probably just the way it happened. Uh, Joel, he looked like he checked out there. Um, I think it was David who got by me there uh, for second. He kind of checked out as well. I've just been in a qualifying slump here recently, but my race sets usually always get me up to the front as long as I keep it clean. Oh, yeah, yet to win a, a 410 uh, league race this season. Uh, championship wise, uh, I believe you're, you're towards the front of the field. I believe you might be in the, in the top five or very close to it. So, uh, But look, congratulations on the third. But uh, before we let you get out of here, I'm sure you've got some people you want to thank. Thank you. As always, you know, uh, shout out to Blue Sphere for uh, you know, helping us out, supporting us with both the 360s, 410s. Um, I do believe they're coming back for next season to continue on. There was talk that one of their partner companies might hop on board, but I think Blue Sphere is going to stick with us for another season. So thanks to them and uh, you know Matt for putting all that together. You brought up in the booth with Ultimate Dirt TV, DTV. I think it was a little rough on Al and Tyler there, but once again, I was able to pull out a podium for the team. And, you know, Dirty Old Bastards, everybody that comes out and races and watches, that was a record number four tens tonight, 30 cars for the first one. I can't wait to see what's here in the second one that's already up and running. So hopefully I can talk to you again later, Brett. All right, there you have it. That was Chris Rose with Drake Holloman out because no doubt he would have been having a chat with our winner. But coming home in second place is the B main bandit himself for all the Harlem Maniacs. David, congratulations <laughs> on a second, man. 21st 
to the uh, to second, you get caught up with Joel, then you go back to the back, and then you come back up to the front. I mean, talk about that race. Um, yeah, it was definitely uh, not, not short of any entertainment there, you know, from qualifying with 30 gallons, put me in the B main, but safely able to get the lead to that. And I was just, track was really good to pass, high, low, middle, whatever. It was just kind of avoiding people. Um, and then, yeah, I got up to second. Uh, I don't know what happened with Chris. Chris must have got nervous or something because he just head first in the wall from Joel. I don't know if Joel hit him there or what, but then uh, when I restarted second behind Joel, he got kicked off the cushion, knocked me sideways, almost killed me. Got a black flag, but luckily it was only like 21 seconds for repair time and restarted like 11th in between behind two lap cars. So I probably passed 30 cars or something the night. Um, but really needed a yellow at the end so I could at least get on the back of Joel and then try to try to race with him like we did 20 laps prior to that. Do you think if you didn't suck in qualifying, you had a legitimate chance at winning this race and, and you know having a good battle with Joel and Chris to start off with? Hey, man, I was begging between setups and the, the stupid thing to fall to that 30. <laughs> Once I heard my first lap was like a, a 14.7 or whatever it was, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> So, um, I don't know. Maybe that's the strategy. Maybe come going into the next race, we'll qualify him back again and come through to be main. Because, uh, hey, at least it worked for us the first time. Well, well I don't know. Second, mate, uh, no doubt I'm sure you got some people you want to thank. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, all guys at Team VLR, thanks to Ultimate Dirt TV for putting it on. And, uh, yeah, first week at Dirty Old Bastards. So, pretty clean group of guys. Everyone, guys got sideways, but they were able to save it for the most part. Um, some good hard racing, so uh, hope to get one position better in the next one. All right, David Harleman in second, and he finds victory lane. Well, I think that Volusia Curse is buried about six foot under, probably even 60 foot under this racetrack at the moment. Joel Birkin, congratulations on the win. It was hard for to start off with, but uh, man, yeah, it was uh, good in the end. Yeah, Joel. Yeah, congratulations on the win. You uh, seem to be breaking this curse up all right now. You can't hear me. You can't hear me. Hear me now. Still can't hear me. All right. It seems though now. All right. So it seems that Joel's got the issue. So we'll tell him to sort his crap out. Garrett, all good, mate. We're just waiting on Joe. In fact, we can probably. Probably going to find him actually. He's just uh, having a few technical issues, but it's uh, hello? yeah, you got a copy now. Hey, hello, hello, Joel. Yes, Brett Wheeler. Wait, what, uh, man, the Volusia curse. It's uh, it's I'd almost have to say it's almost no more. Almost, almost. I've been in the streets, I've been in the I've been in the Hey, uh, that race, you qualified second, you had a good race with Brenner, there was contact there on one of the restarts, and then uh, I think you said he had some sort of Oculus troubles, and um, it sent his car, you know, flying literally almost out of the out of the ballpark, but man, you, you sort of gapped the field from, uh, from there on out. Yeah, I don't know, he might have got a bit scared, so he just thought he'd put a head first on the fence instead of losing, but yeah, who knows. Um, but yeah, um, half the... Brenner decided to do that. I sort of stood on it and took David out just to give him a bit more challenge and pass some more cars. Well, man, you are. First time you've raced this season. In fact, first time you've raced ever uh, with the Dirty Old Pass. And uh, to come away with the win, it's got to be uh, satisfying for you. Yeah, um, good bunch of guys race. All past guys that are running as far as I've seen so far. And yeah, um, hopefully we can back it up in the next one. Well, no doubt, I'm sure you've got some people you want to thank. Yeah, thanks, bro. Um, Max, thanks to the guys at TTL Esports, um, down to Graphic Stash Media, Fiber Simulator, Ultimate Dirt TV, and Star Designs, and um, I think it's Chris for putting on and you for Rooker. Well, good luck in the next one, and hopefully you can uh, put it in victory lane again. Hopefully. All right, there we have it. Joel Berkeley with the win. That wraps up 
Race number one of the Blues for your Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series from Volusia for the ninth round of the series. We are well and truly now into the final third of the season. We have one more race to come up after this one. In fact, it's already launched. So we're going to go and shut this stream down. We're going to be back live in a few moments' time. Once again, we want to thank uh, our sponsors here at Ultimate Dirt TV. We want to thank uh, SETI Group Holdings. You can check them out at www.seti, that's C-E-D-I, dot com. And we want to thank Colby's Eye Paints as well. You can check them out on Facebook. Go to Colby's Eye Paints and make sure you support the people that support Ultimate Dirt TV. We will be back in about five or so minutes, excuse me, with a new stream. So stick around for race number two. You're on Ultimate TV. It's Brett Wheeler saying, I'll see you back shortly.